I will come you to another series of our videos. So in this video we'll be discussing vectors. So vectors or first let's this uh, let's define what a vector quantity is. So a vector quantity this is a quantity that has both the magnitude and direction. So in other words the magnitude means the size. Then it is also important for us to also discuss what a scalar quantity is. So a scalar quantity is a quantity that has only the magnitude, meaning it does not have the direction. So let's um, look at the question. So the question reads, a force F1 of magnitude 6.00 newtons acts on an object at the origin in a direction 30 degrees above the positive x-axis. So this is very important taking note of above the positive x-axis as shown in figure P1.58. We continue reading the question. A second force F2 of magnitude 5.00 newton acts on the object in the direction of the positive x uh, sorry the positive y axis so they are asking now find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force f1 plus f2 so that is our question so in physics, whenever you are given a problem to solve, you need to make sure that you come up with a simplest possible diagram that will show you on how, that is uh, a simplest possible diagram showing on how you understand the given question. So sometimes we call it a free body diagram. So let's see on how we can draw the diagram for this question at hand. So. This is the diagram for the question at hand. So this is force 1, then this is force 2. So they want us to find the, the magnitude and direction. Let's see what... So they're saying find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force, F1 plus F2. So we need... They want us to find the the magnitude and direction of the forces F1 and F2. So how are we going to do it? So in our question we just read, they've said here the angle. Uh, they've said the angle. They've said the angle is 30 degrees. So the angle is the angle here is 30 degrees. Then the angle here, they've said it to be, let's see what they've said. They've said a second force of magnitude 5.0 Newton acts on the object in the direction of the positive y-axis. So positive y-axis is like going up there. So this tells us that this angle is C90. So we've, we have uh, both the, we have the magnitudes of both forces. We have also the angles of both forces. So now what we are remaining with is to solve the question. How are we going to solve the question? We'll solve the question to find the resultant by resolving these forces into their components. So how do we do them? So we'll start with force 1. Let's resolve the components. Or let's resolve force 1 into its components. So force 1, the magnitude of force 1 is 6.0 Newton. Then the direction is 30 degrees above the positive x-axis. So like in our uh, videos earlier, we mentioned that you should always 
uh, make uh, positive x-axis as your reference point so let's find the x component of force one so x component so if uh, f1 uh, the x component of f1 is given by f1 cos theta so what is f1 f1 we've said it's 6.0 newton so in case you are wondering where this 6.0 newton is coming from this is from our question we just read we just read so then what is the theta the theta is also in the question we just read which is 30 degrees so you substitute like this then after substituting you punch on uh, a calculator so let's try to punch this on a calculator 6.0 cos 30 when you punch it on a calculator you get 5.1961524232 Newton. So in physics, you are you are taught of significant figures. Then you are also taught of rounding off. So in this case, I've decided that we round off the the um, our x component of force one to two significant figures. So when we round it off, our answer will be five point two newton. So the x component of force one is five point two newton. So now let's look at the y component of force 1. So to find the y component of force 1, this is um, this is the the equation which is um, the y component of force 1 is equal to f1 sin theta. What is f1? f1 we said the magnitude of f1 we said it's 6 newtons which is here. Then what is the angle which is the theta so the angle we said it's 30 above the x-axis so positive x-axis i mean so when we punch this on a calculator what are we getting so let's try to punch that on a calculator so 6 sine 30 we are getting 3 so the the y component of force 1 is 3 newton so this becomes the the y component of force 1 which is 3 newton then this is the x component so at this point let's look um, at let's also try to find the components of force 2 so let's resolve force 2 into its components so force 2 force 2 has the magnitude of 5.0 newton then the direction or the angle of 90 degrees because we've seen force 2 it's going up like this then force 1 is going like this so the one which is goes up like that um, the one that goes up you see we can see that it's 90 degrees then here they've just told us that it's 30 degrees so this 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 um, let's find the x component of force two. So the x component to find the x component of force two, we use this equation f two cos theta. What is f two? F two the magnitude is five point zero newton, which is five here. Then the theta or the direction is ninety, which is the ninety we've written here. Then, when we punch this on a calculator, 5 cos 90 is 0. So, the x component of force 2 is 0 newton. Then, also, let's now look at the y component of force 2. So, the y component of force 2 is given by F2 sin theta. What is our F2? Our F2, we said it's 5.0 newton. Which is here then what is the theta the theta is 90 degrees so this is what we have so when we punch that on a calculator 5 sine 90 it's giving us 5 newtons so that becomes our y component of force 2 
by V point zero newtons then the x component is zero newton so at this point let's now uh, come up with a summation of these components i'm sure during high school we are you were told that you when you're dealing with algebraic equations or algebra you add the the um you add uh, like terms, you add them together, or you collect the like terms together. So also this will apply in this um, question. We'll add the x component of both the force 1 and force 2. Then we'll also add the y component of force 1 and force 2 together. So so we we this can be done easily to avoid making mistakes by doing them in form of a table so let's look on how the table look like so this is a table showing here this um, this um, so this column is showing the the vector then here is showing the components so the x component and the y component so force one the x component is 5.2, then the y component is 3. Then force 2, the x component is 0, then the y component is 5. Then the we now find the resultant. How do we find the resultant? We just add. Here we add with this, we, we get 5.2. Then we add 3 plus 5, we get 8. So 5.2 and 8, these are resultant uh, the x this these are the components of the resultant force so 5.2 is the x um, is the x component of the resultant force then uh, 8 is the y component of the resultant force so we've arranged this in a table format then we can also come up with uh, a diagram representing this in a vector form so how how will the diagram look like so let's see how the diagram will look like so this is how the diagram will look like the y component we've seen that it's positive then the x component we've also seen that it's positive so this is how the diagram will look like the way it is here so this is the diagram of the resultant vector so we can see that this vector is in the first quadrant At this point now, we have to find the magnitude of the resultant. So how do we find the magnitude of the resultant? So we we'll say magnitude of the resultant is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. So these are the components of the, the resultant vector. So we substitute with, um, at x we substitute with 5.2, which is the resultant x component. And at y we substitute with, Eight, which is the resultant y component then when you punch on a calculator 5.2 squared you get 27.04 then when you punch 8 squared you get 64 so when you add this you get 91.04 that's what you get so after getting this you can now find the square root so when you find the square root you find that the resultant mag uh, the, the magnitude of the resultant force is 9.54 newtons so this is the result uh, the, the magnitude of the resultant force so let's uh, continue we, then we can also find the the direction so how do we find the direction direction is given by tan inverse y over x so tan inverse what is our y we said the the x component of our y the resultant y uh, the x component of the resultant force is the the y component of the resultant force is 8 then the x component of the resultant force is 5.2 so when you when you do this mathematically you get 1.5385 
then when you punch this on a calculator you find that the theta is 56.98 so this becomes the direction of the vector and this becomes the answer because we said that this vector is in the first quadrant the vector is in the first quadrant so this is our answer is the direction so no need of wanting to continue because this is in the first quadrant so this is the answer so we can now conclude by saying the magnitude of the resultant force is 9.54 newton then the direction of the resultant force is 56.98 degrees celsius so at this point we are done with what we are supposed to do in this question thank you for watching remember to subscribe to our youtube channel